Hello, my friends. Apple have revealed their hand in the AI race at WWDC 2024. Apple intelligence is here. This could be the moment, people. Apple's new cross-platform Siri will interact with all your iPhone apps, Mac workspaces, and even integrates for free with OpenAI's ChatGPT 4.0. That could be a game changer. Here's what you need to know and a bunch of new updates as well that come to iOS 18, iPadOS 18, and Mac Sequoia that make the cut for me, including customization and the supercharge calculator that is finally coming to iPad. Ah, I know, it's wild. It's actually brilliant. And in case you're wondering, no, that does not involve Genmojis. It's a bad name, Apple. Apple intelligence, however, whoever thought of that, needs a marketing gold medal. So Apple started WWDC off with some cool updates to Vision Pro, Vision OS 2. But to be honest, very few of us are in the user group at the moment, right? We'll come back to the iPhone and iPad updates that caught my eye in a moment. But first, we've got to do the important stuff, Apple intelligence and the all new Siri. Now, as Tim said, personal intelligence is the next big step for Apple. I think it's fair to say that Apple have felt a bit behind on the AI assistant stuff, but Apple has always been the company to not do it first and then come along a little later and do it right and best. Will this be the same? Let me know what you think in the comments. And what is really exciting to me is how they have addressed two of the biggest barriers that have been, in my opinion, preventing AI being more useful day to day, or as they put it, AI for the rest of us. And those are how to get AI convincingly taking action for you in the context of what you're doing. And second, how to address those many privacy concerns that a lot of us have. Apple intelligence seems new and exciting for us everyday consumers because it looks like it has real potential to integrate seamlessly across your digital spaces. And that means a huge leap forward for Siri. Apple talked about wanting intelligence that understands you. So Apple intelligence will be primarily run on device. That's exactly why we've been seeing all these advanced neural engine specs added to the M4 iPad, the A17 iPhone 15 Pro, the M3 MacBooks recently. The result, Siri will now be able to read the pages you are looking at, reference your on-device data without storing it, and help you take actions through the natural language and instructions. So we can say, add this person to my contacts and drop this photo into my notes on the subject. Okay, the example they gave was a bit of a stalker-esque notes on your mates page, but hey, the tech's cool. ChatGPT 4.0. Now, this is a new partnership with OpenAI, and it means the new look Siri Assistant has the option to plug directly into using GPT 4.0 for free without an account, I might add. When needed, you can plug into those advanced chat tools and use a whole world of knowledge. You will now have generative models at the core of your devices and how you interact with them. A seamless integration to ask questions about, say, documents, PDFs, images, and that all sits within the system-wide writing assistant too, as you compose wherever you are. I wonder if this means that we can plug in our custom assistant workflows directly and power them through the Apple interface. Worth waiting for, right? Privacy, the most repeated word in the presentation. <laughs> Privacy was mentioned a fair bit. You know what? No wonder. It's a scary time to feel like we're just giving all our info mindlessly to the computers. Apple offered some pretty convincing reassurances. They are combining on-device processing awareness without collecting your data, and they're using a new semantic index to feed info to the generative model to help you all backed up with their new private cloud compute system. Essentially, this scales your iPhone device security outward into the cloud. You can privately recruit Apple's servers to offer additional computing power for more complex requests without storing any of your information. This seems like the key to all this being amazing. So what are the features you can expect? Intelligent priority notifications, writing tools that interact automatically on Apple apps and third-party apps, floating over everything with GPT ready to go. You can create original images from instructions or even sketches in your notes app. It's built into Pages, Freeform, Keynote. I'm not sure how much I use it, but it's all powered by this new app called Playground that allows you to play. This is a big one, voice activated interactions with your apps. And yes, it can take actions like tap into your to-do list for you. Personal context awareness means Siri can reference info on your screen in your emails so you can genuinely ask questions and it will be able to answer more effectively, we hope. 
And for like using Siri on your phone specifically, we can also type to Siri by double tapping at the bottom of the screen. So worries about talking to it all the time. And I even heard that you can nod yes and no with your head when you got your AirPods in. Cool. But what's super cool for me is how this goes beyond that chat GPT LLM. The big one, on-screen awareness. So we can say, do this with what I'm looking at, and it does it for you. Most impressively, AI and Siri will integrate across iPad and Mac OS to do some seriously cool things. So we've got rewrite, which gives different versions of what you write in line. We can see smart replies to select drafted responses. Message and mail will be able to create rich auto replies to conversation. Tone choices are adjustable. Proofread will make grammar, punctuation, and sentence structure better. And we have a TLDR maker to summarize text right in front of you. For mail and inbox management, it feels like we now have those superhuman features we want. The summaries of emails or previews and ask for summaries. New focus modes reduce interruptions. And on the creative side, we've got some cool stuff like an image wand in your notes app to turn rough sketches into a more serious picture. We essentially have the magic eraser now in our photo editor, finally. And using natural language searching to find images and relevant moments even within a video clip. That could be really cool for me with my content creation flow. So what do you think? Is this finally the AI Siri we've been waiting for? This seems far more promising than the last Siri. AI will be available on M1 and later devices and iPhone 15 Pro upwards with the public beta coming in the summer. The public release I think is in autumn or fall as a lot of you might call it. Okay, so that's the AI overview, but let me now tell you my top picks of the new features coming to iOS 18, iPadOS 18, and Mac Sequoia in the autumn. And we have to start with a small but enjoyable one, customization for iPhones and iPads. We can now arrange apps and icons to specific places off the grid. There's a dark look for the icons and a new customization sheet, allowing you to tint all the apps to a single color. And I know it's been around for years on Android, but I love Apple and good design goes hand in hand with their stuff. So on that note, if you didn't know, now is as good a time as ever to check out my minimal icon and wallpaper design packs. And we're working on some new releases and designs to celebrate and make the most of these new iOS customization features in the coming months. Link below if you wanna check them out and make sure to subscribe while you're down there too. That multi-page customizable control center, we can swipe to groups of controls for things like media playback or home controls. And we can now swap the controls for flashlight to say a note taker or even use the action button to go straight to these controls. So watch this space for some videos from me on how to make the most of these features for personal productivity in iOS. Messages, tap backs are now all of the emojis. Great, next. <laughs> But much more interesting to me in messages is the send later scheduling feature. I know Android has had this for a while, but good to see. Oh, mail, AI on device categorization. This is great and seems similar to many of the features that people have had for a while in other apps, but for diehard Apple mail users, it's welcome. Let's talk about iPad OS 18 and beyond all of the above that of course will be included. Oh my goodness. The new calculator is here. I mean, we've been waiting for so long. It's updated and takes advantage of the larger display finally on the iPad. And what's really cool about this though is actually something called Math Notes. Using the Apple Pencil, you can write out math expressions and the calculator solves it for you when you add an equal sign. Make a quick budget, draw a line underneath, and it'll give you the answer in the total. How cool is that? This all works as well in Notes. I think this is so good. And on Notes, there's a new smart script, which essentially allows you to train the AI on your handwriting notes, and it will smooth them out with machine learning. And so it means you can write messily, and then it will come up cleaner. So I'm gonna love that for taking notes on my theater shows. And a new floating tab bar that morphs into a sidebar, and then some other stuff. But sadly, for iOS 18, there was no sign of the rumor of a movement towards a more Mac-like set of pro options. What a shame. Let's round this off now then with Mac Sequoia. And by far the most welcome from my perspective, number one, finally, quick tileable windows for easier productivity and layouts. We've been waiting for this for ages. And most exciting for me though is number two, iPhone mirroring. 
this is a full interaction with your entire phone on your Mac. I do a lot of social posting, so I can drag things from my Mac, for example, and files directly onto the phone on the computer, and it works. Now, the iPhone audio comes through the Mac, and I really love the feature that when you're mirroring on the Mac, the iPhone stays locked, so no one else can use it, but if you put it into standby mode on a stand, you can see that at the same time. And let's round all this up with iPhone notifications to your Mac. It takes your notifications from your phone and pushes them to your Mac. I'm not sure I want that. Minimize people, minimize your distractions. And on the subject of minimizing distractions, don't forget to check out those minimal icon design packs below. And since this is a tech and productivity channel, you should watch one of these videos next for more great ways to make the most of your Apple tech for productivity, or this specific one down here for my other favorite operating system to get your life organized, Notion and my life OS. It would be awesome if you subscribed here if you haven't. I'll see you on the next one, bye.